I'm Sarah, welcome to Geeky Abode. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a review of our 2021-2022 school year. I currently have two children ages seven and nine years old, and we use mostly a secular approach with an eclectic style to our schooling. The first subject that we're gonna start off with today is reading. Reading was the focus of our entire school year this year. I had a first grader that was just learning how to read, and I also have a nine-year-old that's a bit of a struggling reader. I wanted to make sure that we focused on reading before we moved on to anything else and really made reading the focus of our school year. The first curriculum that I want to talk about is one that we've been using for about two years with my daughter, and it's called Reading Kingdom. Reading Kingdom is an online program that uses six different methods to help teach your child how to read. It's worked out wonderfully for us, but I felt like it wasn't quite enough, so we needed to add in more. Watching a bunch of YouTube videos like we all do, I came across this woman named Marnie, and she has a program that's called Reading Simplified. Reading Simplified, it just hit with me. For some reason, it just I felt like it was the right thing for us to do. So I started doing the Reading Simplified program. Reading Simplified, what it does is it does, it simplifies the instruction of learning how to read. It's about 12 steps, and then your child will learn all the different phonics. Instead of spreading that over out numerous years, they learn all the phonics within those first 12 steps, and then they just build on their fluency. Of course, I can't do anything just following one curriculum, I always have to like combine everything. So my daughter started off with Reading Kingdom and I started my son off with Reading Kingdom. My daughter is at the end of the Reading Kingdom program and she's almost complete with that. When that's completed, you'll be at a third grade level for reading. My son started it, he loved it in the beginning and then all of a sudden it just wasn't working for him anymore. And in the past, I've held on and been married to curriculums and it's been the biggest mistake that I've ever done is not move on and try something different. So after a couple weeks of reading Kingdom not working for him anymore, we decided to remove that aspect of the curriculum and move on. So we have Reading Kingdom, which is an online program, and I'll link it down below. That has been a huge success for my daughter, wasn't so much for my son, maybe it will in the future. The next program was the Reading Simplified program, where I learned the instructions and taught the method to my child or my children. What it is is those just simple little activities, like switching letters, and the way that they work together really helps your child learn how to read. So we've been using Reading Kingdom along with Reading Simplified. Up next is the next curriculum that is an oldie but goodie. This one is all about reading. We have a long history with all about reading. I actually started using all about reading in the very, very beginning. I read and I did lots of research about reading curriculums and all about reading just felt like it was going to be the best curriculum for us. And it was until my daughter started to struggle. She was able to sound all the letters out individually, but was having a difficult time combining them together. So we shelved it after, this was the curriculum that I was married to. After a while, I ended up shelving it and I never thought I would come back to it. This year, I pulled some of the readers off the shelf with, in combining with what we were working with, the Reading Kingdom and the Reading Simplified, the readers seemed great. So I pulled them off the shelf and we started using them. Then I pulled off the shelf, I pulled off the activity book. We started using that. Both of my kids liked the games with that. So then I pulled all of them off the shelf and I ordered more levels and I'm combining that in with our reading simplified methods and the online supplementation of Reading Kingdom. But the all about reading has been like the bulk of our reading curriculum this year. And honestly, I love it. It's a little bit slow, but that is also a really good thing because when you're learning how to read, sometimes you do have to slow down and take your time and master a concept. And All About Reading does that in a wonderful way. So All About Reading is a curriculum that we love, that worked well for us this year. It surprised me, and hopefully we'll continue with it for the next year. The next one is also an oldie but goodie. 
This is more of a supplementation type of a curriculum. Let's see. But this is Explode the Code. I'm sure everybody has heard about Explode the Code. This is another one that I used within the same time frame that we did all about reading. And it worked and we liked it. And I just, for some reason, never picked it up again when my son started kindergarten and first grade in the past couple of years. And this year I really wanted to add in something that they can work on independently and Explode the Code is perfect for that. And it also helps a little bit with learning how to spell and sound the letters. And it's wonderful. It just takes a few minutes. They do a page a day and it's just a little supplementation to help them with their, le their reading and their phonics and their spelling. The next one is actually a surprise. It is a public school reading curriculum called Treasures. This is actually discontinued and I believe it's been replaced with a new program called Wonders. What is inside this book is basically an anthology of age appropriate readers and stories. And that's basically how we use it. We use it as a reader and we just read a little bit every day. There's also some writing prompts and some grammar in this. And we'll do that occasionally, but we have some other curriculums that we use for that. But the treasures is great because it's what I call cheap and cheerful. It's extremely affordable. You don't have to have 10,000 books or we already get enough books from the library. So it's really nice to have these affordable anthologies of stories that we can use and read and just keep moving through them. So treasures, treasures is a hit. We love treasures. We'll continue to use treasures for readers. Next is some of the books that we like to read. When you're teaching a child to read, it's really great to have a bunch of little easy readers, whether they're sight readers or whether they're for phonics readers. And a couple of our favorites that we've used this year, especially with my first grader, are these Now I'm Reading. This is the Animal Antics. These are great. I have a bunch of these and they're wonderful because they're colorful little books and they have all the different little phonics in them and they're just wonderful little readers. These are a huge win for us. Another one, sight readers. These sight readers, meet the sight words. These have been great. We absolutely love these books. I highly suggest these. So now I'm reading readers and meet the sight words readers are both great. Another way that we had our kids practice reading this year was Epic Books, which is basically an online library. My kids, every single day, I'll set them up with it. They'll do 20 minutes of independent reading. And the independent reading doesn't necessarily need to be where they're actually reading. They do have many books that it will read to them and it will highlight the word as they read it. Honestly, I don't care whether they're reading it themselves or whether it's being read to them, but to me the focus this year was just eyes on text. They take that 20 minutes every single day, they can read something that is their interest or it be read to them, they're happy, they earn these little eggs in, in the online characters and they grow into different characters that can read with them. They're happy, it shows the 20 minutes that they read every day as their goal and so Epic Books has been a wonderful fit to our homeschooling this year. A couple other things that I have here that went with our reading this year is I really like games. I like to introduce as much game schooling as we can to our day. One of the things that we really like that worked really well is Meet the Sight Words, or I'm sorry, Sight Words SWAT is what this is called. This is a game and it has lots of little bugs or flies, I believe, and fly swatters. And you lay out all the, the words and you can call them out and your kid has to swat them as fast as they can and whoever does wins. But it's a great way to practice your sight words and it'd be fun and feel like a game. Another way that we like to practice our sight words is just simple flashcards. I know it sounds simple and boring, but it works. The repetition of practicing your sight words using flashcards takes a few moments every day. To us, it's a successful part of our school. Another game that we've used that was great for homeschooling and reading this year is Bob's Books Happy Hats. Bob's Books. Those are another little reader that's wonderful. They're kind of boring because they're just little black illustrations that are kind of odd, but the books are great 
for early readers. But Happy Hats, Happy Hats is a great game to learn the basics, the very beginning of sounding out words. And it's a great way for them to practice it, but they're playing a game. So Happy Hats is another great hit for us. And I think that's about it. Let me look. Oh, one more. I almost forgot about this. Another thing that we have utilized this year that we have really enjoyed is reading eggs. Reading eggs, we've used it maybe more so for the math seeds portion of the reading eggs program, but reading eggs has reading eggs, fast phonics, which is a nice little phonics program, reading express, which is more of a comprehension program, which is great for like, I believe nine to 12 year olds. They also have a great place in there that my kid like, kids like to go that where you can create your own stories and you can submit them to a contest. So reading eggs is great because for, I believe it's only $69 a year, you can have multiple children and you can do the multiple programs, the reading eggs, the fast phonics, reading express, and the math seeds, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So let's wrap this up. Reading has been very successful this year. Both of my kids have made huge progress. And it's just exciting. Reading was one of those subjects that I was always extremely nervous to teach. It's the one I actually dreaded the most. I'm more of a math person. But when you're seeing your kid learn how to read, it also can be one of the most magical and exciting moments of your life or your day in your homeschool. So this year, reading is the first year that I can say reading has been a success and we're happy. is my language arts. We haven't been doing a lot of language arts because the focus has really been on learning how to read, but there were a few areas that I wanted to explore and have in our homeschool this year. One of them is handwriting. We use these easy peasies, Channies sheets for handwriting and copy work. We would just use some blank sheets of the lined paper I'd write a sentence, have my kids copy it. So handwriting has been part of our every single day. Another thing with handwriting that I just recently added probably about a month ago, and it's been quite a surprise to me how well it's gone over. And it's something that I've seen off and on for years and I've kind of had in the back of my head that maybe I would buy someday. But it is Draw Right Now. Draw Right Now has been such a joy for us in our homeschool. I use the little sentences in here for copy work, but my kids have loved drawing the characters and they love, they spend like 20 minutes, half an hour every day drawing a character. To me, it's great. And I love curriculum that has a dual purpose. So this has the text in it for your copy work for your handwriting, plus the drawing instruction, which can be both art and handwriting. So draw right now. I love draw right now. We're gonna keep draw right now. I wanted to introduce a little bit of grammar, even though we we're focusing on reading. So I found this Evans Moore Language Fundamentals, which starts with the beginning grammar. This is the grade one. I'm, I'm using this with both my children, my first grader and my third grader, because we haven't done, we've only done a little bit of grammar off and on with my third grader, just because reading has been a bit of a struggle. So I don't want to overload with all these other concepts until we really have a good foundation of reading. But I've started with this language fundamentals, grade one, and this has been great. And it's a thick book. It's going to keep us, keep us going for quite a while. We like it. We just do a little page every day. The last thing for language arts is my daughter is a storyteller. She loves to create stories make up stories, characters, do the illustrations for it. So that's something that I want to help her grow in our homeschool, even though her reading still needs to develop further. Something that is extremely fun for making up stories is this Tall Tales game. There are 50 little figurines in it, plus there's setting cards and you can draw them out of a bag and you can use the characters, the little figurines and the setting cards 
to help make up a story. This is something that's really fun that we like to dig out and we'll continue to use. And I see us adding in some different things this year when it comes to our creative writing. <laughs> is math. Math, we have been really lucky. We have stuck with the same curriculum that we started out with in the beginning. We loved it and I can't see us ever changing it. And that curriculum is Math You See. Math You See is great. It is a mastery approach, but with that said, after each lesson that you master, there are review pages. So you are reviewing previous concepts that you've learned. So it's not a true spiral but it is mastery with some review. These are no frill math pages. They're just black and white pages with the colorful blocks. But the program is great. It's extremely thorough. It moves forward. There's plenty of practice. One thing I would say with math you see is there's a lot of work problems on the worksheets. Don't feel like you have to do all of them. If my children understand a concept, I'll move on to the next concept and then just use some of those pages or those pro problems for practice of those concepts. And then also on the other hand, if your child isn't getting a concept, there's plenty of ways for you to practice it. So my son was in the alpha this year. He's almost done the alpha and moving into the beta. My daughter has been finishing up the beta and has moved into gamma which is the multiplication. This has worked really well for us. I see us sticking with this in the future, so Matthew C is a good win. The next thing I wanna talk about is online supplementation for math. I like to have online supplementation when it comes to reading, language arts, and math. This year's math supplementation online is the Math Seeds program that is also grouped together with the Reading Eggs program. I believe it goes up to third grade through third grade math. And what is great is that it looks like it's games. My kids feel like they're playing little math games, but it's a way for them to practice the, the lessons that they've already been learning and the concepts they've already been learning. So we have math you see, huge win. Math sees huge win for $69. You get the math program, the reading program. Huge win, we're gonna continue with that until they're done with it. The next things are just little fun games and little tools that I've used and supplementations to learn different concepts of the year. One of the things I wanted to practice with both kids this year was learning how to tell time. So I have a couple things that I used to teach them how to tell time. I don't really love the way that they teach time in math seats, so I wanted to do it differently. I got this little workbook it's a little school zone, get ready to tell time workbook. It's been great. There's a little workbook pages. My kids have loved it. It was like $3. This has been perfect. Along with that, it's just fun. We've had this for years, this little clock. We'd play with it, play games with it. This with the little workbook has been great for telling time. Another thing is, is a YouTube purchase. I'm sure you guys know about the YouTube purchases. As soon as you see somebody with something on YouTube, you're like, oh, I have to have that. This is one of those. We were practicing place value, just using a regular sheet of paper. I'd write a number down, ask my kids what the place value was until I saw this and I thought it was fun. This little colorful rainbow flip chart is great for place value. So what we do is, Occasionally, I'll take it out, put a number on here, have my kids tell me what the number is, what the place value spots are, and it's been great. It's fun. I love this flip chart. I'll link it down below in case you want one too. I like games. I like using games when it comes to ways to practice the skills that we've been learning. So I have a handful of games that we use this year that we love. Same with time, along with the time. Is this what time is it? game. This is such a simple game. There's like, I think four different game boards in here that have different skill levels of time for hours, hour, hour and a half, 15 minutes. It's just flimsy paper. And a lot of people might complain about that. But honestly, for the amount of money you pay and the concepts it teaches, this is a win for us. Another game are these little Moby tiles. Moby Kids, actually, is what this is. 
These are just little number tiles. There's games associated with it. A lot of times we would just use it to practice concepts. I'd say I'd have my daughter or my son put together a board of different addition or subtraction problems using those little tiles. These are a huge win. Another one is the Think Fun Math Dice. This is great. These are great to play with. It's a good way to practice your math concepts. My kids love these. These are a win. We'll continue to use these. The last two math related games that I have is a favorite. It's been used a lot. It's been chewed on by the dogs. Quarkle. Quarkle is such a fun math game. This I gift to everybody. It is so much fun. It's great to learn sequencing. It's great for thinking and math concepts. It is wonderful. Quarkle is great. The last one we've just started using. Oh, where am I going? The last one is, the glare is bad, Pizza Fractions. We've just started using this and it's going to help us introduce fractions before we actually learn it in our Matthew C program. But it's a, it's a fun way and our kids can learn how to do fractions and knit pizza. I mean, who doesn't like pizza? So that is what I have for math. Math has been great. Math has seemed to always be great. is science. Science is one of those subjects that I feel like we never do enough of. We love science in our house and my daughter would like to be a scientist or an artist one day. So science is something we enjoy. The first thing I have to start off with is a little bit unconventional and it is using a public school textbook for science. This is an old Harcourt science book. I like to use it as a jumping point it has good information in it that's age appropriate, and I use it to bounce off and use it for, as a base for unit studies. And just bounce around for information whenever we're studying something in science. So the Harcourt Science Book is extremely affordable. I probably paid only like $8 for this, and I got it off like eBay or thrift books, which is great. It's just a great tool to have in your home school. It doesn't have to be the base, and you don't have to go word for word out of it, but it is a good place to start. Another thing that we added in this year that we loved and that we'll continue to do until we're finished with all the videos is using Mystery Science. Mystery Science is an online video-based science program. I wouldn't say it's a full curriculum, but it is great. And if you don't have a lot of time, it's great to add into your day. There's little videos that are prompted by questions from students and you also have lots of activities or extensions that you could add onto it. So Mystery Science has been great for us this school year. Another thing that we used is, and that'll also be in our social studies category, is Passports to Adventure from the Waldock Way. We used that and then we built off of it and did science units. One of the science units that we focus on this year was dinosaurs. And I have a few fun things over here that are dinosaur related that went with that. One of them was I bought this Young Scientist Club. This was extremely affordable. It was like under $10 and it's four games in one. Memory Guessing Fun Facts in Bingo. It's a bunch of dinosaur cards, but we have loved it. This has been a lot of fun. My kids have learned a lot about dinosaurs using this fun little game. So this has been a win. Another thing that was so much fun and I want to get all of them. I think they have like a frog one, human body, are these books. Let's see, woo, you open it up and you, you can touch it and feel it. And there's all these different pages that shows you all the information about the different systems of the dinosaur. This is great, we love this. Nibbles, the Dinosaur Guide is a fun book that we enjoyed with our dinosaur unit. Another curriculum that we got with, from the Waldock Way was the National Park curriculum because we went to the Great Smoky Mountains over the summer and we really enjoyed going to the National Park and I wanted to bring that into our homeschool. So we did a little bit of national... So we did a little bit of National Park study. And my kids, I mean, who doesn't... Who pooped in the park? 
Which kid doesn't think poop's fun when you're like seven and nine years old? So we've read through a bunch of these Who Pooped in the Park books. So then my mom actually got this for Christmas. And this has been great to go along with it. Poop bingo. That's fun. We've loved poop bingo when it comes to science. So as you can see, we've had fun with our dinosaur unit this year. Another thing unit that we're doing and we're just wrapping up right now is a weather unit. I pretty much put together a weather unit based off of the Harcourt Science book, what was on Mystery Science for Weather, and then a couple books from my favorite publisher. And my one of my favorite publishers is National Geographic Kids. This Ultimate Weatherpedia has been a great book to use as a spine for our weather unit and we really enjoyed that. And then I like to do sometimes what I would call more of like a gentle study where we don't have a full unit study but I just pick a couple great books and we use it as a reader and read through it every day. One of the books that I've really enjoyed this year is The Mysteries of the Universe by DK. DK is my other favorite publisher. This is beautiful. It's been fun. We've really loved this. We love space, as you'll learn around here. We love space and the moon, and we recently got a telescope. We saw a rocket launch this year. So space, anything space-related is a huge win. I also love nature. And I came across this book at the library and loved it. Slow down. Let me see if I can open this and show it to you. The lighting is not great. I'm sorry. What it is, is a bunch of different pages about nature. That one's about snowflakes. This one's about the rainbow. And it has just enough like scientific information and with the beautiful illustrations. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a great book to just gently read through. So that's what we've done for science. <laughs> For social studies this year, we've used a combination of a few different curriculums and resources. The first one was The Passport to Adventures. We read the Magic Treehouse books and traveled around the world using that. Another way that we explored the world is we used Letters from Afar. Letters from Afar are, is a subscription, it's a letter subscription that comes in the mail every single month. And it features a beautiful place and it has a wonderful story that goes along with it. There's also this nice little field notes guide. We love using this. Letters from Afar was a huge hit this year. My kids get excited when it comes in the mail. And I want to figure out how to expand on this for next year to make it more of a geography social studies curriculum. The last thing that we've used for social studies this year is another Harcourt student textbook from a public school. This is just simple. We use it as a read, reader and we do some of the activities in it. It's just a way to get a good little base and taste of social studies. Next year, I have more ideas for social studies, so we'll talk about that in an upcoming video about what our choices are going to be for next year. I have made quite a bit of changes when it comes to our science and social studies, but I don't want to let you know now. I'll let you know later. So off to art, music, and extracurricular coming up next. Up next is art and music. Art and music is where I happen to have my biggest feelings of mom guilt when it comes to our homeschool. My kids love art and they love music. And sometimes it feels like we're not doing enough and I'd like to do more. So in the future, hopefully that's something that we will remedy. But for today, I'm going to review what we've done for art in the past school year. One of the things that has been a success for us is the Craft and Boogie subscription kits. 
These are basically just craft kits. It also comes with a booklet in it that has some recipes and you get them every month. This has been a huge hit because I've always had hopes and dreams of doing lots of crafts with the kids. But by the time I have to make the list of all the supplies I get, go to the store and get them, it was never happening. So the craft and boogie kits are making it so crafting can happen in my home. You get it, you don't have to do all it at once. It's enough, you can spread it over the month. So craft and boogie kits have been wonderful for art this month this year, I'm sorry. That is pretty much all we've done for art this year, except for like independent painting and different things like that that have come along with our units and just for plain old fun. So hopefully next year we'll be able to put more art in our homeschool. Music, we've done a little bit of Prodigy's music online, which is a nice instructional program. They have the pretty colorful bells and you learned how to play read music it's one of those subjects that's just kind of fallen through the cracks for us we do it sporadically but it's something that you need to do consistently really for your kids to build on it and i'm hoping to make that more of a priority in the future the last subject or category or area that we're going to cover when it comes to reviewing our 2021-2022 school year is our extra 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 curricular activities extracurricular activities this year we've done both of my kids have done dance class Lily, my daughter, has done two classes she's done an acro class a jazz class my son my seven-year-old he did a hip hop agro class. We're actually going to be having their first recital next week. So that's a lot of fun. Dance class has been a huge hit. Soccer, both of my kids did the fall and then the spring soccer sessions nearby. That's also been a huge hit. My son's a little on the fence about that. So we'll see how that goes for next year. But for my daughter, she loves it. Going into the summer, they're going to be trying some basketball for the first time, and also they do swimming lessons in the summer. So the extracurricular activities this year have been a huge hit, as well as our family adventures of going camping over the summer. At the end of the school year last year, before this one started, we went camping to Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama, and that was a huge hit. We've done camping within the state of Florida where we live, and this year we went to the Kennedy Space Center and saw a SpaceX, ro SpaceX rocket launch, which was extremely exciting. So we love to go on little adventures and make memories, and that really makes the whole school year really well-rounded, and not just about curricula, but also about the experiences and memories that you make along the way as a family. And that, to me, is extremely important and an important part about my children's education is the experiences, the memories, and all the little bits of learning that they have along the way. I sometimes refer to myself when we're out in public as school teacher mom, because I'll be pointing out shapes and different things and be teaching as we go, but that's just the way it is with homeschooling. I hope you've liked this video and I hope you've stuck around to the end. If you have, please hit the subscribe button and the bell for ring for notifications so you don't miss out on any content. Pretty soon I'll be releasing a videos, releasing a videos, releasing some videos. And those videos that I have planning coming up are going to be what our plans for the summer are and our curriculum choices for the 2022-2023 school year. So you won't want to miss that because I made lots of changes and we'll be starting a lot of new things. I think I probably bit off more than I could chew, but that's just the way I am. I'll try a lot and if it doesn't work, I can always pull it back. But thank you so much for joining me today and please hit the subscribe button and I hope you join me. Leave a comment down below. This is a brand new channel and I'm excited to be here and build this community and share with you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.